as all rehearsal processes go, ideas are constantly developing and changing. Uh, so the music has to be flexible so we can easily work around different scenarios. Things get spliced in and cut out and then sometimes reverted back in again. So it was really interesting seeing the difference of some of the scores from the page to the stage and actually how some of them just slotted in quite perfectly like a happy accident. Richard III is a very diverse show. You've got a lot of tragedy, sure, but you've also got a lot of humour and each character has their own individual intentions and so the score has to reflect that. One of the ways in which Neil's done that with vocations is by using the same theme but varying it with different textures and timbres. I find the best music in theatre is when you don't actually notice it. It plays a really important role because it has to blend in but also dramatically it has to add another layer. So that was a massive joint challenge between our actors and our fantastic sound team to, to get that just right. Music can convey a lot of information for a scene, for, for an entire show. Uh, it can foreshadow, it can show a character's subconscious thoughts. Uh, and it really changes the way you perform as an actor. The biggest challenge of our show, and any actor musician show to be honest, is listening. You're usually doing at least two things at once, often more than two things at once. Uh, and I personally found the technological side of this rehearsal the most challenging because it was quite new. We were using lots of software and effects pedals with all our instruments, so it was just another area that you had to be switched on to the max. For a few of us in the cast, that meant using instruments and technology that we're not necessarily used to, such as the electric violin or, or cello or the xylosynth. Or for me, that meant using main stage, whereby everything that I play on the piano is being patched through to a different sound or effect. And whilst that's quite exciting and offers up a load of new musical opportunities, it does mean that for us as musicians, we have to get to grips with new ways of playing our instruments. Hitting your cues is really important because sometimes they're visual, sometimes it's an audio cue, sometimes it's a line cue, and sometimes it's another musical cue. It would have to be the meditation scene through to the end of Act 2. It's a good example of how Nick and Neil's ideas come together to create something a little bit different. And it just suddenly becomes a very different beast. It's the moment where everything becomes disillusioned. And then from that moment on, the, the music and the text gather momentum towards the end of Act 2. It sort of ends in a frenzy of madness. My favourite moment musically has to be Buckingham's death. It was such an intimate moment for Freddie. He was playing Buckingham. And it was really great to see the way he was responding on stage to what Dave and I were playing and then how we were responding to his acting at certain points. And it was just this really short, but intimate moment that I think worked on so many different levels. Composing for an actor musician show is vastly different for many reasons. You have to think about your cast uh, instrument wise and whether what you're writing is feasible to be played. And if they're singing at the same time, you have to think about whether you've got brass or woodwind playing because they won't be able to sing at the same time. You have to think about availability of what instruments you actually have at hand. Uh, whether you're going to be moving at the same time because certain instruments can't move and play at the same time and a lot of the time that sort of thing doesn't get set in stone until you're in the room so you have to be really open to short-term change melodically and structurally 